What's up, everyone? So today I am going to be ranking uh, every single starting point guard heading into next season. This is based off of ESPN's current rosters and whatnot. So I chose the starting point guard most likely for every single team going into next season. And you may disagree with some of this, but like there's going to be players that are lower on this list just because they're going to have a lesser role uh with like new uh season add-ons and whatnot so like some players are going to be higher on this list just because they're going to have a lot more usage rate next year and i think they're going to perform better so let's waste no time and let's hop right into this so coming in at 30 we have austin rivers for the new york knicks and i'm most i'm most certain that he's going to be starting at the point guard position this year instead of Alfred Payton or Frank Neokina. I think Rivers is a great backup point guard to have on your team. I don't think he's really capable of really running a full offense. Uh, not that the Knicks are really a great offense, but I don't I don't see him being super successful for the Knicks. Uh, he would definitely be a lot better as a backup point guard in this league. So yeah, I have Austin Rivers at 30. And then at 29, I have Markel Foltz. And Foltz proved that he, he, he looks a lot better in an Orlando Magic jersey than he does in a Philadelphia 76ers jersey. Now, Markel Foltz has been the point guard for the magic for the past i believe two seasons this is going to be his third correct me if i'm if i'm wrong but i believe this is Fultz's third season in the 2020 2021 season it's going to be i really like markel Fultz's game he's so he has a crafty sort of offensive he has, he has a crafty offensive playbook but i don't like his shot creation i like his finishing um and his defense but other than that uh Fultz is not the best point guard you want on your team so for that reason, I'm going to have him at 29. Darius Garland is 28, and for re and I think he has a lot of potential to be a good point guard one day in this league, but Colin Sexton's also on this team. There's a bunch of great guys. Kevin Porter Jr. is, I think he's going to be playing. I know he got into a bunch of stuff recently, but I believe he's going to be playing. They just got, they have Andre Drummond on the team. They still have Kevin Love. They just drafted Isaac Okora. So I think Darius Garland's not going to be like a huge point guard in this league. I don't think he's going to do much for the Cavs. So I th he's kind of just there almost just bringing the ball up and running plays here and there, but he's not going to be doing too much for the Cavs. So for that reason, I have him pretty low on this list. 27 is Chicago Bulls, Kobe White. Now, Kobe White's most likely going to be getting the start this year. Uh, Chris Dunn obviously is out of there. So I think Kobe White's going to be a good point guard. He can shoot the ball really well. Uh, he's not the best defender or passer, but uh, he's one of the, he's a really good underrated scorer in this league. I really liked what he, towards the later end of last season, before everything got shut down, obviously, uh, the, his, his performance in the beginning of the season wasn't that amazing, but Kobe White went on a great tear towards the end of his regular season, and if he can play like that, he will be a lot better than how he was last year, and I think the Chicago Bulls really need a good point guard in him. Patrick Beverly for the Clippers comes in at 26. Beverly is one of the best on-ball defenders in the league. He does foul a lot, but I love his defense as much as much as he's just annoying to watch, especially going up against Imagine as a player. Patrick Beverly, you you got to love his heart and his love for the game and he's not he doesn't really do much else besides playing defense, but he has that mentality on the team that you want. And he's just not as much of a point guard as you want in passing the ball and facilitating. I have Patrick Beverly at 26. Coming in at 25, I have DeJounte Murray on the Spurs. I really like DeJounte Murray's game. He is, I think DeJounte Murray is one of the most underrated guards in the league. No one talks about him really, but he's playing with like subpar teammates. I don't really like Marcus Aldridge, Derek White. These guys are just average players and I think the Spurs are a very average team. DeJounte Murray, he's one of the, I really like DeJounte Murray's. DeJounte Murray, excuse me, his defense, he really has a lot to prove in this league, but I just don't think it's really his time yet. Uh, give it a couple more years, and DeJounte will be one of the good point cards in the league. Jalen Brunson, that's not a terrible spot. Obviously, playing alongside Luka Doncic, you're not going to get a lot of assist and passing it to many other people besides Porzingis and Luka. Luka's going to be the one bringing the ball up uh, a lot of the time. But Jalen Brunson really has a nice mid-range shot and can finish well at the rim. But he's just, he's not the number one, he's the number three option on some nights for this Mavericks team. And now with Josh Richardson there, I don't know how much more touches he's going to have on this team. But yeah, for that reason, Jalen Brunson, 24, I'm okay with that. Mike Conley comes in at the number 23 spot for the Utah Jazz. Donovan Mitchell just got his bag, shout out to him. And Rudy Gobert's still there. Uh, we all know that they didn't have the best chemistry, obviously, because of the whole um, 
virus that got spread between the two really, really early on. Mike Conley, he's obviously got the bag. He's getting he's getting paid a lot of money for not a super productive guard. He was one shot away from sending the team to the second round defeating the Nuggets. But I don't love I don't like Mike Conley's fit on this team. He doesn't really fit with the timeline. He's the the Jazz want to go younger and Mike Conley is one of the older guards in the league. But yeah, I, Mike Conley's facilitating and mentorship and leadership on the team is exactly what they want. So that's what I'm a that's what I'm a, I have Mike Conley. I'm gonna have him at 23. This may be surprising, probably not actually, but Lamelo Ball is at 22. Now we haven't seen a single NBA minute from Lamelo Ball, but based off what I think he's going to be doing this year, getting the starting point guard spot probably over Devontae Graham and Terry Rozier, I think Lamelo Ball is going to be one of the best rookies in the class and. At the point guard position, he can really facilitate. He could do everything pretty much as long as he's efficient at it. He was going, he's going to be great, and I'm really excited to see the kid play in Charlotte. Eric Bledsoe is at 21, and he's going to have a new fit and pretty much a whole new system in New Orleans. Obviously, their play style is going to be around Brandon Ingram, Zion, majority of the time. And my guess is that he's going to start over Lonzo Ball. We're not sure exactly. But Eric Bledsoe kind of reminds me of a shitty, like, just really, not, I shouldn't say really bad, but like a Walmart, like a dollar store version of Chris Paul. Obviously not with the mid-range shot and, like, the craftiness, but he just has a similar play style to him. That And it reminds me of that. Chris Paul is obviously a lot higher on this list. You'll find out soon. But, yeah, I have, I have, I have Eric Bledsoe at 21. Malcolm Brogdon comes in here at the 20 spot for the Indiana Pacers. I like this kid's game. He's a walking bucket, 50-40-90 uh, nearly. I think he actually did put up 50-40-90, former rookie of the year. Malcolm Brogdon has a lot to prove in this league, and I think he's going to really bow out this next season trying to get that extension or trying to get a bigger contract for a better role on a team unlike the Pacers. Obviously, TJ Warren just had a huge leap. Victor Aldipo is going to be coming back hopefully uh, better than ever. And yeah, I don't see I don't see Malcolm Brogdon getting a whole lot of touches really, but I think he's gonna uh, know his role and he's gonna use it and perform really well. Derrick Rose is next up on the list at 19, and I believe he's gonna get the start over Killian Hayes. Killian Hayes, I think, is gonna be the backup for at least year one around Derrick Rose. He's a Rose is a better all-around scorer, not as much of a defensive player and offense and passing player, but I think Derrick Rose should definitely be getting the start for the Pistons this year. Um, I'm expecting him to get a good season, similar to what he had two years ago when he was a slightly an all-star. Uh, he didn't obviously make it, but he he was getting some votes, so I think he's going to play similar to how he did in 2018 or 2019, that was. I don't know. But yeah, Derrick Rose is going to play well this season. Swiper, De'Aaron Fox, 18 on the list. He just got a bag as well for the Kings, and he is going to play phenomenal. I already know. Buddy Hield most likely will be gone. I... It's it's getting to the point where it's, we're less than a month away from the season tipping off. Buddy Hield's still on the team. They just got Tyrese Maxey, who is either going to be moved to shooting guard if Buddy Hield gets traded or the backup point guard. But I think De'Aaron Fox is one of the most fun to watch po young point guards in the league. He's super explosive, and I'm really excited to see what he could do. Um, Harry Giles obviously left in free agency too. I forget who who who, who did he sign to, but he's gone. He's out of there. Um, I was hoping OKC could get him. Obviously, they didn't. But De'Aaron Fox is going to put on a show for us this year. Coming in at 17, I have Dennis Schroeder for the Los Angeles Lakers. That's weird to say, but I have Schroeder. He's going to be playing alongside Anthony Davis and LeBron James, so he's not going to score as much points. But he is going to drop dimes to those guys. If you have LeBron James, Mon you have Montrezl Harrell, Marcus Saul, Anthony Davis. Like, you have guys that you could pass the ball to, and he's going to have – he's going to lead – He's going to be one of the league leaders in assist. Same with LeBron, honestly. I think those two are just going to be dropping dimes all game. Obviously, Schroeder is, one of the, is a really good finisher at the rim. He can knock down the shot from mid-range from three points. So I'm excited to see what he could do for the Lakers. I have John Morant at 16. Now, Morant is going to have a bigger leap than last year, I believe. Uh, he put up, he won Rookie of the Year, obviously. But there's... That was only the start of his career, and we're going to see that leap either this season or next season. My prediction is going to be this season. He's going to be a top five most improved player candidate uh, as of right now. I'm excited to see what he could do alongside Jaron Jackson, Dylan Brooks, that young court in Memphis. So, yeah, I have J John Morant at 16. We're halfway done uh, the list, and at 15, we have Gordon Dragic. 
he just got signed to a two-year deal, I believe it was, with the Miami Heat to be back. It would be weird to see him anywhere else. Obviously, we saw him in, like, the Suns, but Miami is, like, just a perfect place for him. He's going to really uh, use that starting point guard role well, help mentor the young guy in Kendrick Nunn, Tyler Hero, Duncan Robinson. The Heat, the heat are going to look nice again next year. I already know it. If you're still watching this video, please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Uh, this is taking a while for me to edit, so please, it would mean a lot if you could do that. Coming in at 14, I have D'Angelo Russell on the Minnesota Timberwolves. We didn't see a lot from D'Lo on the Timberwolves yet. Alongside Cat, Anthony Edwards, this season he's going to look really good. He's going to be able to pass the ball a lot more to another option in Anthony Edwards. He's going to be able to create a lot more space, I think. And he's going to be more in the flow with two other good pieces that he could go to besides him, except for just Carl Anthony Towns. Malik Beasley might be back, so that'll be even better for him to pass the ball to. So I'm excited to see. I, I feel like I've said every player is going to be exciting this next season. But yeah, I can't wait. Milwaukee's own Drew Holiday is interesting. He He's either going to have a career year in Milwaukee or just not fit their system at all. One of the Milwaukee's going to be a scary defensive team. Giannis, obviously, former de defensive player of the year. Drew Holiday now is their starting point guard. I'm excited. They have a nice big three. Chris Middleton, Drew Holiday, Giannis. I'm, that team is definitely going to perform well in the regular season. Who knows, once again, about the, the postseason because the, the Bucks are just... No Mike Budenholzer, I like him as a coach, but he it might be his time to go if they don't do anything in this playoffs. But Drew Holiday... I'm excited to see what he could do. Why am I saying he? I'm excited for every player. A player I'm actually excited, like seriously excited to see play basketball again is John Wall coming in at the 12th spot. Hasn't played basketball in like two years. Him, Bradley Beal, and Denny Dia are going to be exciting to watch. I'm, I'm actually excited to see John Wall play basketball. It's been a minute. He reminds me of a worse Russell Westbrook, but could shoot the ball just more efficiently. That That, that makes no sense, but yeah, that's... That's what I think. At the 11 spot, Kyle Lowry, big booty Kyle. Kyle, <laughs> Kyle Lowry is going to not get as much minutes. I feel like he's getting older, and I feel like Fred Van Viet is going to slowly start taking that role away from Lowry. And eventually, midseason, we could see him lose that starting point guard spot and move to like a backup possibly. Kyle Lowry is still such a good point guard in this league, so the odds of that happening are very slim. But him, Siakam are going to be another great duo out east we're into the top 10 and at the number 10 slot i have shea gilgis alexander for okc and this kid has a lot of potential he can either boom really well this upcoming season they literally flipped every one of his former teammates it seems like now him lou dort darius Baisley are like the main three guys that okc fans want to see do well next season especially as they're like really young but i think shea is going to have a breakout season he's going to be a borderline all-star just putting up he's going to have a significant lead probably one of the most uh most one of the most valuable candidates for the most improved player he's going to put up at least like 25 now that they're leading uh now that they don't have any other really good offensive options uh he's going to struggle on the defensive end most likely and the guy, he's got to watch out for the double team, knowing that he's one of the only good players that's going to be on this OKC team. But Shea is going to have a huge season and look out for him. Number nine is Jamal Murray, the movie man. <laughs> and Murray, he played phenomenal in the bubble. I think he's going to keep it up. Him, Jokic, Porter Jr., uh, they just got RJ Hampton in the draft. They're going to look all really well. They're going to be a top team out west. Jamal Murray's going to look phenomenal, and he's going to continue his hot streak. The Hawks made some significant moves in the offseason, probably the best. They've probably had the best offseason among all the teams, and I think Trey Young is going to have a great season. He's most likely going to be another all-star. Uh, he could be another all-star captain. Oh, not captain, all-star starter as well. We'll see. Trey Young, Gallinari, they got snipers on the team. They're going to lack a lot of defense, but I am. it's going to be interesting to see what they do in their success. Hopefully, they are a playoff team because I'm looking forward to seeing how this team runs. Emma Walker is seven. He's going to have a good leap, I say. He's obviously getting a lot older, so we don't know necessarily how much of a role he's going to have. Jason Tatum and... Jalen Brown are getting better, but now that Gordon Hayward's out of there, he could have to get a couple more buckets here and there since he's not since they're not gonna have Gordon Hayward to go get that uh bucket from. Hayward was only the fourth option on that team beside behind 
uh, Jason Tatum, then Jalen Brown, then Kemba Walker, or however you want to. It, it was really, they have four good options last year. Now they're only going to have like three really good options. Kemba Walker is going to be that guy. He's still going to facilitate the floor. He's still going to drop his dimes. He's still going to get his buckets. I'm excited. I need to stop saying I'm excited for every team. It's uh, It's been like 20 times I've said it already. Jesus. Number six, I have Brooklyn Nets point guard Kyrie Irving. We haven't seen too, we haven't seen too, too much of Brooklyn Nets Kyrie. We saw him obviously at the beginning of last year. He looked good. He didn't look amazing. Obviously, he was hurt. The first couple games he had in the Brooklyn Nets jersey, it was insane. He had like 52 points in one of them. Nearly had that insane like street ball sort esque buzzer beater, but KD, Kyrie, and Karis LeVert, potential other stars could be coming there. We're not sure yet. He's gonna look insane, and I'm, I'm s stoked. See, I didn't say excited. I said I'm stoked to see Kyrie in Brooklyn extra with KD, and I think they're ready to comp. They're, they're they're ready to contend for that ring right away, and I think they have a good chance of getting it. Honestly, we're officially into the top five, and at the five slot, I have Phoenix Suns starting point guard Christopher Paul. He's making a shit ton of money. He's old as dirt, it seems like now, but Chris Paul is still going to be one of the best point guards in the league. We all know what he's capable of. He, Him and Devin Booker and DeAndre Eden are one of the best big threes out West. Uh, not, I mean, Houston's got a new one now. Uh, we'll see Westbrook soon. But yeah, I think Chris Paul is going to play phenomenal alongside a really good shooting guard in Devin Booker. And... And the Suns are definitely going to be a playoff contending team. Point guard slash power forward. I'm not sure exactly what position he's going to play yet. But that's Mr. Ben Simmons. And for this sake, I'm going to have him running the point guard position. He's built more as a point guard, I think. Just a really tall, overall, big big body self, Ben Simmons. I love Ben Simmons' game, honestly. He's, he's a beast on the defensive end. He's really good at the glass. He could drop crazy passes he he has real good court vision the only thing that he's lacking is his shooting ability which is hasn't been a problem necessarily he obviously wants to work on it and get that shot down but if he could do everything else amazing i think he's not going to have a problem he can't space the floor which is definitely an issue but they had a really good offseason the sixers that is and i i know that they're going to be tough to beat out east especially with like brooklyn and the, I think all those teams are going to be scared when they have to get matched up against the Sixers. Despite the hate that Russell Westbrook gets, he's still a top three point guard in the league in my eyes. And he Westbrook had a really, really nice end to his season. Obviously not in the bubble, but in the regular season, he played phenomenal. I really liked watching what he could do. Every night it was either James Harden or Russell Westbrook just going off. And I'm hoping Russell Westbrook could take that big leap. Not even that he needs to. But keep in mind, he was a former MVP. He averaged a triple double in three state three straight seasons. Ex excuse me. Um, he's got some more pieces on his team offensively and kind of defensively. And Christian Wood and Demarcus Cousins. They lost Robert Covington, which is uh, which is pretty big actually. I really like Robert Covington's game. But Russell Westbrook is still very explosive. And if we can get that explosive MVP esque Russell Westbrook, then the league is in trouble because that man is unstoppable into the top two and it's between Steph Curry and Damian Lillard and I am going Damian Lillard at number two and I love Damian Lillard I always see the Russell Westbrook Damian Lillard debate and I still think Westbrook is I mean I'm a Westbrook fan so I'm gonna be biased but I think Lillard it's hard to say that Lillard is not better than Russell Westbrook after what he put on in the boat like we knew Damian Lillard was a good player not a good player an amazing player and then we saw what he did in the bubble and like it just he went from 10 to a thousand like he looked ridiculous he was shooting from wherever he went on the court and making it with ease and he has himself a better team now in portland and they're gonna be a scary team i don't know how they were only in eight seed last year they weren't very successful but this season they're most definitely going to be a good playoff team and definitely a team that's going to be able to beat the Lakers in the playoffs. And finally, at number one, Steph Curry. He, we did not see much of him at all last season. With the right hand, 
injury, I think it was. It might have been left hand. Whatever it was, Flight is going to be excited to see his man Steph Curry balling out there. Still the best point guard in the league. Whatever anyone says, I still think Curry is a phenomenal point guard. It's going to be hard for anyone to really beat his role. I think Curry, he could shoot the ball really well. His defense isn't amazing. He could get steals. He could play the passing lane phenomenally. One of the, be the best shooter of all time. I said it, yeah, Curry is the best shooter of all time. Uh, you can argue that in the comments. I don't care. I'll I'll back up Curry. I'm not a Curry fan. I used to like watching him. I still love watching Curry. He's so excited to watch. But it's frustrating whenever your team has to go up against him just because you know he's going to dominate, shoot from wherever he wants, and make it from wherever he wants, just like what Lillard does. But Curry just has something about him. The man heats up. He heats up. I love the vibe of him playing at Oracle. Obviously, now they're at Chase Center, and he didn't. Even, he has, he hasn't played that much games at Chase Center. I remember his first game at uh, the new arena was an air ball from three. But yeah, Curry is number one, and he rounds out the list. So if you enjoyed the video, uh, obviously you are not going to have the same exact list as me. This is my own opinions on how I think everyone's going to do next year. But if you enjoyed the video, please, 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 please hit the like button. It means so much. Let me know in the comments if there was any changes you would do to this video please hit the subscribe button i'm really trying to grow on youtube i'm having a lot of fun making these videos so if you could please hit the i need to stop saying please but yeah you get the point thanks so much for watching and i'm out of here